Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Ollie, and welcome back to another video. This is the Premier League team who is going to shock everybody and end up qualifying for a European competition. Now, before we get into it and I tell you who the Premier League team is, I'm going to ask you to do three simple things. Drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below if you agree with me or disagree. Uh, we can have a, a bit of a discussion down there and subscribe to the channel. We're getting very close to 4,000 subscribers and um, it's free to subscribe, helps out massively. And um, there, yeah, just um, subscribe to the channel. So the Premier League team, who I think is going to shock everybody and end up qualifying for a European competition is Crystal Palace. Now hear me out, don't click off the video yet. I've got reasons for this. Um, Crystal Palace usually predict this to be around the bottom of the table, either bottom half or in relegation battle. And as of recently, yes, they have lived up to that reputation. But the summer they've had and the summer that they are having is uh, drastically, um, drastically different to anything we've seen Crystal Palace do in their Premier League tenure. Uh, best place to start off with is probably the manager. Roy Hodgson has now retired and um, left the club and they were looking for a new manager. They was hooked on Lucien Favre for quite a while. Um, something in the talks ended up collapsing and they didn't go and get him. But they have gone and got Patrick Vieira um, Everyone knows him as the top level box to box midfielder for Arsenal. You know, one of the icons of the Premier League playing over 270 games for Arsenal. Um, top, top level midfielder. As a manager, though, relatively unchallenged, he's uh, managed at New York City and he's managed at Nice in League 1. Um, he's played. Uh, not played, he's managed about 180 games, winning 41% of those. Um, so relatively unchallenged yet. I think any manager who doesn't have previous um, Premier League or even EFL managerial experience uh, tends to struggle a bit in the Premier League, but um, there's always the few exceptions. Uh, we're yet to see how Palace will line up and play under him. They've had one pre-season friendly. I believe it was against Walthall. Um, but there's not really enough evidence here to say this is how they're playing. This is the type of football they're going to play. But Vieira, he's not inexperienced, but he's not really got the Premier League experience, which really does help. But... Um, it's, it's a very interesting appointment. It's a big name appointment from them. Um, and it, it's really a sign of things of how the summer have gone for them. Looking at the ins and outs and where their squad has uh, changed from last season. Players going out, players being released. Um, Andros Townsend, he's gone on a free to Everton. Patrick Van Arnholt has been released. Um, James McCarthy... Wayne Hennessy, uh, Gary Cahill. I know he's still in talks about getting a new deal, but at, as of recording, he's been released. Um, all these players, okay, they might have started a few games for Palace last season, but they're over 30. I don't think there's one of them who is 30. There might be. All on pretty decent Premier League wages. To get them out, free up a bit of a wage spell to bring some new players in is an outstanding move from um, Steve Paris, the Crystal Palace chairman. Um, you can really see that he's a business-minded person. If you've not watched it, there's a documentary on Amazon Prime called When Eagles Stare. Um, really gives you a bit of insight to Crystal Palace and the way Paris kind of... Um, orchestrate to club how he makes the big decisions it's a brilliant documentary i highly recommend it uh but yeah he's been absolutely um quality in freeing up the weeds bill and giving patrick vieira the best 
uh, kind of standpoint uh, going into a transfer window as possible. Palace have only signed um, three players at the moment. I'm going to focus on the two main ones. Um, Remy Matthews had signed from Sunderland. He's 27-28. He's probably not going to get many starts. He might be a a backup for Guaita or Guaita, the Spanish one. Um, He could start, who knows, but I, I don't see him starting. So what I am going to do is focus on the two big players who definitely will start. First of all, being Michael Elise, or I think it's Elise, uh, at least one of the two. You guys know I'm not good with uh, pronunciations by now. Uh, 19-year-old playing for Reading last season, the Championship Young Player of the Year. Um, I think they signed him for £8 million, which is absolutely criminal. Uh, 19 goals and assists. I believe 12 of those were actually assessed um, in 44 games, um, averaging something like seven crosses a game, which is absolutely unreal, especially uh, for a 19-year-old in the championship. Um, He can play either central attack and midfielder role or out on the wings. Um, Regardless, a player of that calibre, calibre, um, slotting into a Premier League side, especially when you've got um, Eberici Eze, um, who he is currently injured at the moment, but he will be back soon, and Chris and Benteke, who, with the right player like Elise could be, can be an absolute clinical striker. So I think Elise um, is you know, a no-brainer for Palace. Cheap money, um, not taking too much of a ways, and he has bags of potential um quality signing I feel. Second signing then is Mark Gui or Gui. Um the 21 year old who was signed for uh, aptly 21 million from Chelsea um was on loan at Swansea City last season played a massive part in their uh, playoffs push um top top defender I think he was the fourth best defender uh, statistically in the championship last season um that's a massive deal for him uh five year contract as well so they're really really building a team for the future here um building up a squad of young talent um obviously his praise is a massive um he was part of that england under 17 world cup winners um he's as I mentioned, played massive part for Swansea. I think he picked up uh, the player of the match in one of their playoff semi-final legs. Um, he had an absolute belt or a game at Wembley. Again, like Elise, bagged the potential um, long-term contract. And considering, you know, you've got the Harry Maguire's for 80 million, the Ben White's for a rumoured 50 to 56 million, 21 million on a young English um, high quality centre back is stunning business from uh, Palace. There is also rumours of another centre back coming in. Um, at the moment, it looks like Joachim Anderson from Lyon, uh, who was on loan at Fulham last season, who played amazingly well. Also, talked of Ozan Kabak, who um, played for Liverpool last season. Again, Top quality centre back. Uh, top quality centre backs um, can easily slot into the side. Got Premier League experience, which is what you want in um, in the defensive players. Um, looking like an amazing deal. So where does that leave Palace's squad then? You've got to remember the quality players they've already got on the side. We've touched on Benteke, um, Wilfred Zaha, who is always linked with moved away. He looks like he's set to stay for this season and he is in his prime. Um, Eze, he's not going to be back until November or February time, that kind of time frame. But when he does come back, he comes into the middle of the midfield. You've got Elise on either side of him, Benteke up front, Zaha, an absolutely unreal front four. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, 
they're going to get a European competition. I don't think they'll get Champions League. That's not a top four side. I don't think they'll get the Europa League. This is where I'm being a bit sneaky with it. This season onwards, if you get 7th place or 8th or 9th, depends who wins cup competitions, you will get into the European Conference League, which is the comp the blah, blah, competition below the Europa League. It's still a European competition. I definitely think this Palace side is a top 10 side. Whether they can pick, you know, the other teams around that, their Everton's, their Wolves, you know, possibly their Leeds. I reckon they can just pip in and get in there and they will get a European competition. A little bit of an Ollie's opinion for you there. So, Crystal Palace to make it into the European Conference League. Do you think I'm spot on? Do you think I'm chatting absolute waffle? Let me know down in the comments below. As I said at the start, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Plenty more content coming up, but that's it for today. As always, my name's been Ollie, and up the county. Ollie!